Welcome to Casebag Watches. My name is Tim and this is part two of the little video series Vintage Military Watches and their modern versions and their reissues. And thank you very much for your contribution to part two, if you have contributed, because I've learned so much. There were so many comments and emails and messages about certain timepieces, certain manufacturers, personalities and watchmaking. And in the first part of this video, I went through the decades and through the conflicts and I focused back then a little bit more on affordable watches and now I want to present you the big mix with everything in it with very pricey watches and very affordable watches with crazy designs and simplistic designs and I think every taste will find something very attractive and interesting in this video and so without further ado let's begin with And I want to begin with the most purest military Hamilton watch you can imagine. And this is the Khaki Field Mechanical Hand Winding without a date. Often associated with the Vietnam War era, but I think the design is rather late, late 40s. And I mean, there you have it. There you have your military watch. You can stop to watch the video right now. No, this was a joke. Functionality over every aspect. There's not a single piece of fashion in this watch. There is just those 38 millimeters, three hand watch, legibility over everything. It's very affordable. It has a hand winding, hassle free movement. And so absolutely great piece if you want to have it pure. And the second watch is more flashy, but I like this, this model pretty much. It's a little bit bigger, 40 millimeters. And I love especially this version with the sand colored dial. And I'm talking about the Khaki King, the Khaki King with this distinctive round day on position number 12. But I have to say this watch doesn't look so so realistic. I mean the first I've presented you here looked very realistic and this Khaki King looks a little bit like from an Indiana Jones movie. A little bit cinematic and this makes sense in my eyes because Hamilton is very yeah famous for its appearance in movies. If you google Hamilton watch and cinema then you will find a lot of gorgeous watches, iconic watches and gorgeous movies, of course. And so it makes sense to um, say it's a little bit cinematic here. And Hamilton updates this version, the, the field mechanical from time to time. And the recent model is the Titanium. And it's a gorgeous looking watch, I must say. 42 millimeters, a little bit too big for me, but for other people that's okay. But one little criticism here, was it really necessary to write Titanium in this big font on the case? but overall great looking watch. And if you buy one of the newer versions of your Hamilton khaki, then it comes with the movement H50. And this is a great movement because it offers a power reserve of 80 hours, staggering 80 hours. So you can put the piece aside a few days and then you can pick it up and it's still running. And so great thing. And the price for the basic model, for the basic khaki field mechanical is around 450 euros. And in my eyes, absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth it. I mean, if you were really broke, then you can maybe afford it used. Used, they go for, what is it, 300? Under 300 euros. And so this is a really, really great watch in my eyes. Absolutely good tip for people who like it cinematic or pure. This brand, Glycine, isn't on the radar sometimes. Sometimes they are nearly unknown, which is a shame in my eyes, because they offer a very, very great watch, and this is the Airman. But first, let me tell you two words about Glycine. It's a very old company, founded in 1914 in Switzerland, and they were famous for tiny movements, very tiny, tiny advanced movements back then for ladies' watches and very small watches. And then they evolved from that a little bit. They focused more and more on robustness and reliability of movements and then they produced some sort of tougher watches. In 1953 then they introduced the Airman. The Airman which wasn't meant to be as a military watch at the beginning but today it's seen clearly as a military or in the military tradition of aviation watches. And the Airman, what I love here is it's so typical. In a way, if you see an airman from 1953 and an airman from 1990, then you see in the first second, oh, an airman by Glycine, great. And I mean, imagine watches like the Seamaster by Omega. If you see the 1960 version, then you see a small dress watch. And if you see the James Bond version, then it's a huge diver. And so there's no connection whatsoever. 
But in case of glycine, there is the connection. You see the DNA in that watch until today. And so I should speak now about the newer models like the 2014 Glycine Airman Air Fighter. Um, but I find that this watch rather ugly. Very sorry, Glycine. Very sorry. I don't want to speak about that watch. I want to speak about the vintage line. The vintage line. And here you find, for example, the Airman 36 number one limited edition reference GL0161. And this is the classic 36 millimeter watch with the GMT function and with a plexi and with an advanced movement and with this knob, this little screw on position four and there you can unlock the bezel. I don't know if this is technically necessary to be frank, but it's something extra, it's, it's something. Mm. And if you don't like the 36 millimeter version, there is a 40 millimeter version available. And by the way, sorry for the images here. I have only few images by glycine. I've gave them an entire week to send me some images, but they're really in trouble with the coronavirus and the relaunch of the, of, of the website. And so the press server doesn't work and was quite a mess there. And so very sorry. But I think in a few, few weeks, I'm talking now um, 7th of May in 2020. In a few weeks, I think you'll see some, something new on their website. By the way, I love this, th those artworks. I mean, th those are actual images, actual photos. But there they transport this, this message I see clearly in the Airman 36 number one. And the price for this particular model is around 1,900 euros, which is, um, I think, exactly 2,000 US dollars. And so there you have something very special with tradition in it, with yeah, fine watchmaking in, in it for 2,000 US dollars around that, around that price. And so I think um, there's some reason to include glycine in this video. Next case, interesting case here, the Cabot Watch Company, CWC. They were established 19, let me check my notes, 1972, only to make military watches. And they started with chronographs for the Royal Air Force and the, the naval pilots here in the navigators. But they also produced a very interesting diver. And this diver replaced 1980, the former diver, which was the Rolex Submariner. Can you believe this? The Rolex Submariner back then was a tool watch for military use. I mean, nobody would do this today to put the, what is the price right now, to put that thing in salt water. No way, it's a luxury product now. But back then this was a military piece of equipment and was replaced then by the official Royal Navy diver. And there you can see what happens when a military organization thinks that watch is now too expensive and too yeah, too luxurious, we have to produce something, something new for our needs. And the reissue is still available. And by the way, I love this sentence I found on their website, made in our factory in the Swiss Alps, as we have done since 1972. I love this sentence because it sounds Blofeldish, Bondish, the Swiss Alps, and yeah, very mysterious and with, with ambitions in it. Yeah, and that this is actual a piece of military equipment you can see in the 300 meters water tightness and so it's a very very robust watch 41 millimeter case including crown 45 millimeter the lug width is 20 and the thickness is 12.7 relatively relatively thin watch inside is an ETA the well-known 2824-2 automatic movement and the other components are rather modern so you have super luminova you have sapphire crystal and you have the complete absence of fashion and marketing in the watch, which today, of course, is another form of marketing. But at the end, this is a very pure piece of military machinery here. And the price is 2000 British pounds. 2000 British pounds are 2100 euros and about 2250 US dollars in that region. And so this is not exactly a cheap watch, but um, why should it be a cheap watch? <laughs> Okay, next piece. Many viewers asked me to do something about time factors and especially about the Smith Military PRS 29. And Time Factors is a relatively young company run um, by the former soldier Eddie Platz from Sheffield. Thank you very much for the images, by the way. And they sell reissues of Smith's watches. Smith, Smith's watches, I think is the correct pronunciation here. And this is the PRS 29. 
And this is the, a classic 36 millimeter hand winding military watch. Comes with a white dial and a black dial. The white dial is Air Ministry and the black dial is Infantry. Anti-magnetic case, very interesting here. And it was produced only between 1967 and 1970. Today with modern components, so you find a modern movement in it, you find sapphire crystal on top and so relatively hassle-free watch. And this watch managed to deliver um, the no bullshit look, the functionality together with the weird form of beauty. I can imagine this watch of course with a leather jacket on the NATO strap. This is not a problem with jeans and khakis and so not a problem. But I can also imagine that watch together with a leather strap and together with this type of business suit you wear if you have something <laughs> really to do then this was a, would be a wonderful addition. I'm really in the mood to ask Eddie if you can send me a watch for a review. I don't want to keep it. Re relax Eddie but maybe I should do this. Put it in the comments, please, if you want this, this, this watch in the light box, if you want to see an in-depth review of that particular piece. And the price is around 300 British pounds, so we're talking about around 310 euros or 315 US dollars in that region. And now we're talking about one of the oldest watch companies in the world, and this is Panerai. Founded 1860 in Italy, and long time they were only the manufacturer for military watches for the military, for the Italian military to be precise. And what many people don't know, they built their first non-military watch 1993. So a relatively long history in military watchmaking. And 1997, they were part of the Vendome, Vendome Group, I don't know how to pronounce this, which was bought later then by Richemont, and now they are part of the Richemont Group. And so we see a relatively fast forward wave from a military outfitter, so to speak, into a luxury fashion brand. Fashion? Ah, no, it's not a fashion brand. Panerai is not a fashion brand, but absolutely luxurious today. And what I love here is again this, this um, the DNA. The DNA is still in those watches. The design is absolutely unique. And you can illustrate this very good with the PAM 673. There you have this classic 50s vintage military look, which of course wasn't vintage back then. It was functionality. And you can see this on the dial clearly. No logo. Just the former client, Marina Militare, which is the Italian Navy. Massive case with 47 millimeters, so if you want to wear that watch actually, then you need a big wrist, but some gentlemen have big wrists and so I think this is not a problem. By the way, often people ask what means Radiomir and Luminor when it comes to Panerai watches. Very simple, Radiomir and Luminor are looms and Radiomir was the early loom based on Radium, so that's the name, and, and Luminor was after that and today of course they use Super Luminova on their watches. And this particular watch here comes with a manual wind movement, which offers a power reserve of 72 hours thanks to two mainspring barrels. And this is new, of course. The old Panerais were powered by Rolex movement. And by the way, the exhibition case back here, I think this is one of the reasons that the, that the watch is watertight only down to 100 meters. This was criticized very often, especially on YouTube, but I think it is not a diving watch. Let's be realistic, because the price is around 8,000 euros. <laughs> Nobody will go diving with an 8,000 euro watch, which is 8,800 US dollars in that region. But this illustrates what happens when a group like Richemont buys something with such a distinctive design and that attractive history. They can choose their price absolutely freely because there's no competition. Of course, there are fakes and of course there are homages, but there's nobody around that with that with that, yeah, with that look, with that look. And so they can say, this watch costs 8,000 euros now, or 8,800 US dollars. But overall, let's be fair, it's a stunning watch. I mean, look at those textures here. And it's so clean and it's so pure. It's like those old fliegers from Stova I've presented in the last video, without any clutter, and the watch isn't boring. The watch is interesting. The watch is still interesting to look because everything is on its place. The dimensions on the dial are yeah, just just gorgeous. I can I can only imagine how hard it is to come up with such a yeah, perfect and beautiful design. And so I think despite all the criticism, this watch earns its reputation. Absolutely.
Now we have a German manufacturer, Tutima, and they are the official producers or manufacturers for the Luftwaffe, which is the German Air Force nowadays. And they started 1984 with a chronograph for pilots and the Luftwaffe demanded quite some specifications. The thing had to be super legible, super robust and capable of service up to 15,000 meters and it had to deal with forces of 7G. Inside was the Lemania 5100 which is not longer in production and so when Tutima had to develop or could develop the next watch for the Luftwaffe they've put in an in-house movement and now we're talking about the M2 NATO chronograph. As I said we have an in-house movement which is the Tutima 521. We have a titanium case waterproof down to 300 meters sapphire crystal magnetic cage inside and at first glance you can say well this is a mono pusher chronograph but here you see the pushers with the, those rubber inlays for easy use and normally the watch comes on that titanium bracelet here but you know what my choice would be the leather or the Kevlar the Kevlar strap here and it's a big watch 46 millimeters the height is 15.5 so this is not a fashion item this is really a piece of military machinery and to prove this the nice press lady at Tutimas has sent me this wrist shots here from actual pilots wearing that M2 NATO chronograph and the watch is not cheap 4500 euros um, for a military watch this is not cheap this is really r rather pricey but I think we can assume that in that case in this case here we pay a big chunk of that money for the watch and for the technology and for for the quality and only a small fraction for marketing last watch in this episode and many people will criticize me a bit um, to feature the watch here in, in that form but I think it's justified. In part one of this video I've spoken about the Seagull 1963 and the role model of the Seagull was the Breguet Type 20 watch. Breguet Type 20 so chronograph, early chronograph for aviation, military aviation and Zenit is also very famous to, uh, for producing military inspired watches but the problem here is they often go too far. As you can see here, there's a limit, a fine line between following a tradition and making an item for an action movie or a comic book. But you also can say nearly every reissue of a military watch in the luxury segment is somewhat a comic book item because it will never be used anymore for its purpose because of the high price. And this is exactly the case here. I mean, if you see this Pilot Type 20 Extra Special, this has nothing to do anymore with the real Type 20, but it comes with everything else and everything big. Big case, 45 millimeters, huge numerals in very flamboyant font, and you have huge cathedral hands, you have a huge onion crown, you have extra special written on the dial, with, which is uh, somewhat ridiculous, but okay, okay. And sometimes I think those watches were invented by photographers because it's so much fun to work with those images. I mean, look at this. I mean, I, I really mean this. There is something fascinating in it. There is absolutely something fascinating in it. And the price is immensely over the top. This is around 8,000. But I said this before. I think those pieces are um, supermodels on a fashion show on the catwalk. They don't show you the, the, the garment you should wear the next day. They show what's possible. They draw attention to the manufacturer. They show how, how, how far the manufacturer can go. Those watches add something to, re to the reputation and the, yeah, the spirit of the manufacturer. But of course you don't buy this watch then. I've never seen this watch in the wildlife, so to speak. But I can imagine that people are inspired by that watch and then they buy a more subtle Zenit but with this, this flamboyant look in, in mind. And so those were my seventh pick when it comes to vintage inspired or actual vintage military timepieces and their reissues. I think I leave it there. Two parts are enough for this topic. But I was in contact with so many manufacturers and brands and people. And so I think I can um, arrange here and there a piece for actual review in the light box here on the channel. And yeah, put it in the comments. What kind of piece do you would like to see here? And then I'll try to get it. I cannot promise that it's possible in every case, but I will try to be convincing. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time.